first of all, we don't have the communities like we used to have. And some of that was caused by um, integration, uh, uh, kind of giving us uh, a cursory freedom to move about the plane, if you will, and move to certain areas. Um, it decimated our black businesses, and some uh, drank the Kool-Aid to believe that white products were better than black products. And so we became socially and economically disorganized as, as people. Now, in addition to that, when we started moving and spreading out, we lost that ability to have that village that when, if Larry Cushenberry did something on my block, I would have no problem calling him down. Mm -hmm. And Larry's mother would know that. We lost that. So now we have a system where our kids are milling around, unattended, if you will, in different areas away from their home. So the current methods of addressing those kids isn't Miss So-and-so hauling out her window, it's called the police. And we know what that's progressed to. Right. And so when I think about that, I don't ever remember a police officer coming into our community to resolve issues with our youth. Because adults had that, we got this. But once you break down that community, and I, and I used to hear uh, when I was in uh, counseling, uh, someone made a comment in class, uh, don't you think it's bad that blacks have so many single family units? And I said, well, let me just suggest to you, don't you think it's further bad that it was whites that created that in slavery by separating the families? Now, if your question is, is it the ideal situation, then my response is no. And that was the end of their question. But our communities kind of broke down and uh, we didn't have that collective level of, 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 of communication and interaction that got us through in the past. <laughs> what, what the blacks were hoping for. Okay. They were hoping for a world that was different than the world that he just left. A world where uh, they would be respected. A world where they could go in and sit out and eat in places where they couldn't before. Where their kids could go to school at the schoolhouse that's just across the street. They expected better access. They expected to be treated not necessarily as equals, but certainly more than three-fifths of a man. What did whites expect? Whites, they say on the airplane the X's are clearly marked. And I think many of the whites embraced the change. But then there were those who looked for the exit, thus spawning our suburbs and our white flight. Uh, well, hey, hey, they can, they can buy, you know, once we blocked them and they bought the house, we're moving, okay? And we have never come to, um, James Baldwin said, you can't change what you won't face. And we've never sit down and had a frank discussion about where we've been, who we are now, and where we want this to look like down the road. And we have those people who are, who are the great dividers, who, who keep spewing hate and so forth. The problem is, we aren't like our ancestors who rail against that sort of thing, even at the risk of death. And so consequently, we go along to get along. And things will never get better that way. You know? In that dynamic, in that scenario, um, that somebody has to give up power. Sure. Yeah. Um, so I'm going it, to... It's, it's not, not happening. Okay. They're not giving up power. And I'm going to tell you this. Frederick Douglass said that power concedes nothing without a demand. Mm -hmm. And you... Throughout history, nobody in the power structure, especially in the economic power structure, is willing to share that or give it up without a fight, without a demand. Mm -hmm. And so it's not going to come 
naturally. My hope is that all of these affected groups, the Jewish people who they try to exterminate, the Native Americans, well we know the genocide and the history behind that, our Mexican brothers who own all the way up through Colorado and Texas, and now we're trying to build a wall to keep them on the other side, the Rio Grande. Um, what if, and our Muslim brothers, who everybody wants to treat them as a pariah, when all they want to do, some of the most kindest people, is to worship God in their way, earn a living, and take care of their families. What if all those people would come together and decide to start their own banks and say, listen, we're gonna, our power's in our response to it, and we're gonna take control of this in a way that they understand, which is economics. It would shut it down. Now, that probably won't happen because divide and conquer, the Willie Lynch theories are alive and well, and they've done them so well, and, and my dad used to say, if somebody tells a lie often enough, vociferous enough, there are people that will believe it. And the lie has been passed down, how inferior, um, how degenerate, uh, they're rapists, they're murderers, they're thieves, and less intelligent people or people who are part of that power structure need that to help justify what they do. If I woke up tomorrow and I had an Aladdin's lamp, okay. And <laughs> how many wishes do I get before I start rubbing it? You're, 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 I only get two. All right. I took two. You get. Two. I get two. All right. I. I. Um, my first wish would be for a world where people are moving at the speed of respect. Moving at the speed of respect. Yeah. Tell me a little bit more about that. Right now, the speed that we're moving at, uh, at a respectful level, is at a low ebb. Mm -hmm. I want a higher level of concentration of moving at the level of respect. Because if we get to the point where we respect, what I mean by respect, you and I can have political differences. We can have all kinds of differences. We can even discuss them maybe even argue about them. But you know what? You're entitled to your opinion. I'm entitled to mine. Let's go get some ice cream. That's the world I'm looking for. Okay. And if we get to that point, then most things are small things. Why? Because we haven't taken them to personal to the extent that we're willing to let the ship hit the iceberg just to prove my point or to um, to approve, to prove that my party affiliation is the party, and all of those kind of incendiary things. And then your second one. You know, my second one is that um, we come to a point where you know my first wish was uh, was at the speed of of truth and so forth and respect. I want us to have a world that really understands the true function of education. There was a guy in the early 70s by the name of Kirsch Namurti, who was from India, wrote a satirical essay on the function of education. And he said, is the function of education for us to fit in some divot in society therefore becoming dull, weary, and stupid? Or is it for us to expand our minds to understand life and its subtleties? That's what I want, us to move from these test-oriented type educational systems, move from these indoctrinating type systems, and get back to exploring the universe and the world as our classroom and knowing how things work in concert. So when we make decisions, we understand that if we don't do something in the next 10, 15 years, that we could lose close to a million species off the face of the earth. But when you don't understand life and its subtleties, then that's of no consequence to you. 
All you're worried about is fitting in that dividend society. They'll get you paid. That is my wish.